Uh, my name is Jesse. I've been to Trinity for over 15 years, uh, and I want to share my own journey uh, into leadership. Sometimes people ask me if you know, they've seen leadership qualities in me, and it's actually happened several times, and oftentimes unprompted, and it's, it's something surprising to me, and that's part of the reason why that I've chosen to take a more active uh, role in taking leadership positions. Actually, when I was going to my young men's group back in university, uh, one of the leaders, uh, Dale Giesbrecht, actually told me, hey, Jesse, you know, you could be running this group someday. You, it doesn't just have to be me. And I, I took his word to, words to heart because I realized, like, yeah, actually, I, I could, you know, take more of an active role, and that's kind of why I'm here now. So in many cases where, you know, when I heard people tell me, hey, you could, you know, be in these positions or you can you, be a bigger part of, you know, a leadership, I feel like that was definitely a way of God kind of speaking to me through other people where like, hey, you know, you, you, you're, you're ready. You're ready for this next step. I think for a while I fought against it because I felt like, no, this is not, that's not me. But um, I think over time, especially as, you know, I started getting more involved with people at church and even just like in, in work in general. I realized that, you know, it it's really doesn't pay to be passive and, you know, it, it makes a lot more sense to actually be more engaged. It's really through uh, in, in interacting with people as a leader that I think you also build your faith with God because you get to see exactly in your eyes right now, like in front of you, uh, how people's start, lives start changing when you actually help uh, organize all these people together and they start sharing their faith story to, with one another. One of the things about leadership for me is that I, I really think about the responsibility aspect and to quote Spider-Man, with great power <laughs> comes great responsibility. Um, and one of the big things for responsibility is that you have to understand the impact you can make on other people as well as yourself and you know the greater community when you do get into a leadership position. So for me, uh, part of the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm interested in moving towards it isn't so much for the power, but really um, kind of the duty that's given to us as Christians because we're meant to follow in Christ's footsteps and Christ was fundamentally a leader. I think Jesus was a really great leader primarily because he wasn't the type of leader where he just told people what to do. He really led from the front. Think about it, the apostles wrote about him. He didn't like explicitly write stuff for us. That says something. Um, people wrote about what he did and his example. And I think that speaks volumes. His life is about action. And I think it's very easy for us to kind of imagine leaders as the ones who are kind of in the stuffy pulpit hiding behind and saying, you go forward, die for me, <laughs> right? But he's the one who died for us. And I think that's why he's such a, a revolutionary leader in history is that like no one else, like if you have the crazy dictators like Stalin or Mao Zedong, they go die in the front line. The revolution's done. Jesus is the opposite. And I think that really demonstrates again why we have such a good example to follow and part of my interest, again, in, in being more engaged in leadership. I definitely see uh, servant leadership as a big part of the Christian faith and one part I'm really interested in. And I think it's, it's a really big example because uh, even for uh, Jesus, like he, he washed his apostles' feet, right? And I think that sets a really big example to, you know, stay humble and it prevents, you know, the kind of idea like, oh, I know where everything's at. And, you know, that, that complacency that comes with, uh, you know, successful leadership sometimes. One thing I would tell people who, you know, might be in the younger ages, kind of close to me, or maybe you're more in the, the youth group side of things. When they say leadership, it sounds intimidating. You don't have to take it big. It doesn't have to be huge. Like I started off in VBS. That's my first real leadership role in church, right? And that was back when I was like in, I think, uh, high school. So you, you can start small. It doesn't have to be a huge commitment. I think every part counts. God, you know, appreciates whatever approach you take. And again, you don't become a leader overnight. It's something that you develop into. I think it's better to try than to just kind of assume I'm not a leader. Uh, and so, and just don't forget, there's different leaders with different roles. It doesn't mean you have to be in the front. You could have a person in the back helping the tech team. You could be a leader there. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, you know, in the spotlight role. One thing I've learned is that when people are filled with God and the spirit, especially within the context of leadership, it really can't be contained. It really does spill out uh, and people see it. Uh, people are drawn to it. And I feel like when we really do harness it uh, in its totality, uh, we will be able to impact in a really positive way for you know, the rest of you know, Mississauga, maybe the rest of the GTA. I think we'll be able to like really uh, benefit the community, especially after COVID where like there's so many broken families and uh, uh, lives because of you know, the pandemic. So I feel really blessed that, you know, I had this opportunity for, you know, leadership growth 
uh, and this kind of role uh, within Trinity so far. And I really look forward to seeing how other people have the same opportunity and how we'll be able to really make a positive impact in the future.